Hey Floss Tube, it's Julie the Gulf Coast Stitcher back for part two of this video. So first let me um, kind of explain my abruptly ending the last video. So Danny owns a lawn business and has all this heavy equipment and he comes home several times throughout the day because inevitably, you know, things need to be fixed or dropped off or picked up or whatever. We have a big piece of, huge piece of property here. So... <laughs> My last video ended kind of abruptly because I wasn't expecting him to come home because you know how it is. You kind of do floss tube in the privacy of your own, like, not everyone understands that you're talking to yourself, basically, but to a thousand other people. Um, so, also, I'm in the kitchen, so the front door is right here. He can, He's going to come right in, make grab him some lunch, make a ton of racket, and probably, like, make fun of me for doing this. Um, no, not really. He's made a few appearances in Floss 2 videos, so you guys are familiar with him. He's a, he's a character. So anyway, I was going through Shop Hall. Um, I just watched the end of the last video and realized that I looked like so panicked when I said, oh my gosh, Danny's home. I just try to get through these, um, when the house is quiet. It, they're not quiet when the lawn man, when Dan the lawn man comes home. Not quiet at all. Okay, so I'm going to pick back up where I left off. So grab your piece of paper and your pen or pause me or screen shoot me or whatever you need to do. Um, and we'll keep going through this. Okay, here we go. Picking up where we left off. I know I talked about um, tell an emblem. And also, while I was making the last video, do you remember me saying that the mail lady was here? Well, she brought extra copies. So we have more tell an emblem. Which was good because I, I only ordered a few on the first go round and then when I saw them in person I was like, uh yeah, this needs to happen. I look crazy. Sorry y'all. Okay. Look at this. Plum Street Mermaid Fractor. I mean they modestly have some some leaf leaves covering their bits too. I'm into this. I like fractures, I noticed lately, too. This is going to go in my private stash for sure in the someday. Someday I'll stitch this for my mom. My mom loves anything beachy, beach-related, mermaid-related, water-related, dolphin-related. She loves it all. So that's happening. Mermaid fracture. Back in stock. La Dida Peace House. I've had this. Um, we had the whole weather vane conversation about Sarah. Remember? So weather vane, well, weather vane, Peace House. La Dida back in stock. Plum Street. I must have been on kick when I was ordering these. Cotton bird. There's cotton. There's a bird. The bird is out of his cage, which is cool. Love this. Love, love, love. I don't know if I showed this one or not because it's in the top of the pile. So maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Cricut Collection, Summer. I, I This chart is, I opened it because a customer asked me if I would order the called for floss. And I know I discussed this in the previous video that for DMC, no can do. Especially, I think I looked this up and it takes 40, 49 maybe, 45 a lot of colors to be a chart that's not that big but that's why it looks so great i'm sorry about all the rattling i'm trying to put it back in here so i don't damage it because this one i'm sure we'll be finding a new home in a day or two i i really appreciate for any designers out there i appreciate when you put thread legend on the back so that we don't have to open it up to see it um anybody who's designing out there who is looking for my two cents which you're probably not but I appreciate that because that can that can change whether or not I want to chart or not. Really, to be honest with you, 49 colors, I'm a little intimidated by that. Um, but but none of it, you don't need a lot of any of them. So probably have them in your stash anyway. Mary Noel, back in stock. Got more of those. Scattered Seed. Y'all know how I feel about her. Spring Meadow. Cute. This has crescent colors. Um, what you call it? J 
Gentle Arts Weeks. Require seven colors. Classic color works. This was creation number two by Tammy Black. So that's kind of cool. Back when she was just starting, I suppose. Patriotic Shaker Box by the Scarlet House. This was a Nashville release, now available to all of us who didn't go. Love it. You don't have to do it as a shaker box. I probably would not. But you get three charts. And on this site, I didn't write the stitch count because the box, if you do it as a box, it's one. The pin keeps one. The scissor fobs one. I will tell you that the largest one is 90 by 61, which is the which is the shaker box. You don't have to do it that way. You do whatever you want. Patriotic stuff is always cool. Okay. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, first of all, if you don't, why don't you? You should because I post stitchy stuff and bird stuff and beach stuff. I mean, that that seems like interesting, at least to me. This literally looks like my backyard. I have a feeding, like, sanctuary area that I, I guess I have one tree. I live on the water. We have one tree, tons of seagrass. And then I have a, my lot is totally wooded. But on the beach side, we just have one tree that we left, which is a big giant magnolia tree. And then that's where we have the feeding station underneath that. So the birds have some coverage. And then we have another, I have like, that's home base. And then I have, that's what I call it. And then I have, that's where the, the squirrel condo is. And then I have a, a, additional feeding stations along the, the brush line so that they have a ton of coverage there. Um, Y'all, I have an indigo bunting in my yard now. Let me just stop this long enough to tell you this. If you're bored by bird talk, I'm probably not the floss tuber for you to watch because I'm fascinated by birds. I do not believe in having birds inside the house. I shouldn't say I don't believe in it, but it's not my jam. Like, I'm not going to have a bird in a cage inside the house. Just like, as much as I love fish and water stuff, I don't really want to have fish in a tank inside the house. I just feel like that goes against, for me... Maybe it's an ethical thing. I don't know. If you love your fish tanks and your bird tanks, your bird tanks, your bird cages, more power to you. But for me, I don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy seeing them in the wild. And I was outside. I guess we were outside watching the sunset. It was maybe the day before yesterday. And Danny had been telling me, first of all, let me tell you, Danny was the most anti-bird feeder like he didn't want bird feeders he didn't want bird he didn't want nothing to do with the birds around the house because as a lawn man and a you know yard caregiver and a horticulturist as you will he sees the bird feeders draw a ton of rodents so i think it's the cast off like whatever they don't want to eat and they just kick out um so then he has customers who have issues suddenly with, not suddenly, but every spring they get issues with rodents. We have beach mice here, which are actually an endangered species. So if you get beach mice, you're, you're SOL. And if you don't know what SOL means, I'm not going to tell you. Um, if you get beach mice, you're not allowed, it's illegal to exterminate them. Think about that. Think about if you had your house or your yard run over. Sorry about that. Sarah messaging me from school. Kids have their phones at school all the time. But imagine that your house was run over, but like your property had beach mice all over it and there's nothing you could do about it. So he's seen that happen to more than one customer. And he was like, I do not want the birds houses around the house. So we kind of compromised because initially I had them right in front of the big picture window in the living room, which I loved because I could be really close to them and they wouldn't see me. And it was really cool. And then for Mother's Day last year, I think it was, he moved them all underneath the magnolia tree, which is, we have two seawalls to protect us from the water. And the magnolia tree is actually rooted on the second seawall, but it sticks up over the first seawall. So it was really cool how he did it. So I'll put some pictures on Instagram. I don't know how to enter any pictures onto this. I'm shooting this through iMovie, through my MacBook. So... It was a big deal for him to do that for me for Mother's Day. So that was the sweetest gesture. And then for Valentine's Day, I got more bird feeders. And for my birthday, I got more bird feeders. And every day when he comes home now, like, he would probably be mad if he knew I told you this. He takes care of the birds almost every day. It's great. I have a big giant bird bath, concrete bird bath, which is a pain in the neck to wash out. And he goes out there and does it and it's wonderful like 
he's like, he'll come home and he'll say, he'll like, like randomly, day before yesterday, he bought a new feeder and was like, I bought a new feeder to put up and a new shepherd's hook, so we're going to put him out there by the tree line. And anyway, I say all of this <laughs> to tell you how happy I am that at least he's enjoying birding with me a little bit. So we were sitting outside watching the sunset, as we occasionally do. We don't do that often enough because we take for granted this beautiful area that we live in. And I was just, didn't have my phone, didn't have my camera. We were just sitting outside having a nice evening. And I looked on the bird feeder and there was what appeared to be a bright blue cardinal. I lost my mind. I was like, I mean, I just froze. I said, I don't want to move. I don't want to scare them off. Oh my gosh, this is a blue cardinal. Like I've heard of blue cardinals and I've heard of yellow cardinals, but I've never seen one. I went into this full on freak out mode about this blue cardinal. Of course, I said, if I go get my camera, he's going to fly away. And Danny says, he's been out here for weeks. He's, he says, I told you I've seen a bluebird. When you tell me you've seen a bluebird, I'm assuming that you mean the giant bully blue jays that we have that that run off the squirrels. Like, I don't think you mean a blue bunting. Or uh, at that time, I thought it was a blue cardinal. So I ran inside, got my camera. I got a few pictures, which I will post on Instagram and Facebook to the page because I'll, I'll post them to the community, Gulf Coast Stitches community page. So I, I get, I have a bird identifier on my phone. So I managed to identify this bird via the Audubon Society's wonderful app application. And it is a blue bunting or indigo bunting, which is in the cardinal family, but he's a little bit smaller. So he was there again yesterday and here today. So I hope he'll stay and visit for a while. I don't know why I got on digressed off of this because that blue bunting news was really exciting. And I've told you all about the heron. Like the heron must have some kind of sonar detection where he can hear when my, if I have my phone or my camera, he will come and try to drink out of my coffee cup when I'm sitting on the porch. If I open the door with a camera or a phone, he squawks and flies off. So I've never even managed to capture a picture of the heron, who I call Clyde, who is constantly, he even pecks, like, pecks right at the back door. He's elusive, that Clyde. He's an elusive creature. Also, we had a falcon, which was pretty exciting. Full-on falcon. Didn't get a picture of him either, but I know he'll be back because I'm sure he was there to make a snack out of the squirrels. All of that to get back to this. Hannah and her birds. So this so much looks like my feeding station, and I'm going to show you guys in, in pictures later. Okay. Let me, do I have it? Okay, let me tell you this really, uh, this is a short story too. Keep stitching, carry on, do whatever it is you're doing, cooking dinner, folding laundry, watching, whatever. Danny was telling me, this is hilarious. He said he was working out at his shop outside and there was a squirrel. And we have so many squirrels. Our squirrels are so spoiled. We, we're, we're unlike most bird um, foster parents. I guess that's what you would call us. We don't try to run the squirrels off. We don't baffle the squirrels. We feed them too. So we have a lot. And we live on a wooded lot full of 100, 100 year old oak trees and the squirrels are very, very happy here. So he was out working at a shop and he looked up on the branch and there was a squirrel like hugged onto the branch. His eyes were open really big and he wasn't moving. So Danny was like, this is really, what's going on? What's the matter with the squirrel? He was worried like he had been electrocuted or something. So he walks over to him and he's like eye level with him and he's like, this guy's not okay. He reaches out and he can actually pet the squirrel, which if you hand raise them outside, that's not that unusual. But on a tree out, out by his building, that's really weird. I would expect that by my feeders, but out in the front yard. And he was like, something is really wrong with the squirrel. He was kind of concerned about it. And then for some reason, he looked up and sitting on the top of his workshop building was a hawk. And that was, a, it was a white-tailed hawk. And it was sitting there looking right at the squirrel. And I guess the squirrel was afraid to move a muscle. Because if he moved a muscle, that sight bird would swoop down and get him. So, I think Danny shooed away the hawk. And maybe the squirrel ran away for 
for, and saved his life. I don't know. I never heard the rest of the deal. He never told me how it turned out. I probably don't want to know, but it was just so funny to me because he said he was just like frozen and he would even like, he was not going to move for anything. And then when he looked up, he saw the hawks. So we have hawks too, which are cool. That's it. Carry back on to stitching. Jeanette Douglas, Bendy Stitchy. I don't know if you have this, Michelle. You probably do. Mermaid box. This was a special order for a customer and they cannot travel alone. So I bought a few extras of these. This is beautiful. But you know the thing that gets me? And it's what makes her thing so beautiful, I think. Look at all the things you need to do this. You need Gloriana NPIs, Access a co Commodities, uh, Rainbow Gallery, Thread Gatherer, and other sundries. It's I haven't opened this, but it's it's to, for the stitch count to only be 62 by 95. This is a multi-page situation, so there's probably a ton of cool info in here. This is beautiful, though. So there's that. Uh, Queenstown samplers. So these samplers are quite pricey. I have not opened them up to see how they are printed inside. But we've all been bit by the sampler bug. I know I have. I know Michelle has. I know it's, it's a lot of pages, y'all, in this one. We've all been bit by the sampler bug lately. Harriet Redfern, 1830, an accurate reproduction of a sampler in the Queenstown collection. And there's an actual photo on the front of this, which I love. I love the colors. Look how popping those colors are. Do it however you want, but I would probably stitch it exactly like this. It says a beginning level sampler enthusiast will enjoy finishing this sampler. Did you hear that? Michelle? I know you're listening. You're not a beginning stitcher by any stretch of the imagination, but we're a begin we're beginners in the sampler world, so this is for us. We gotta get we've gotta get that in our stash. You've seen this a thousand times lately, but why not, right? Two familiars. If you did the EAP sal, if you just like dark stitching, if you just like birds, you can do that. This is a $3 chart. Do you hear me, budget people? $3. Sampler of bees. This is also by the City Stitcher. Um, this one was produced in 1990. That's why it's $3. Because today, and it has 1990 on it. Because today, this chart would be 12 or $15, but you can get it for three bucks. So, so right there on it. I'm sure I'll sell out. Don't panic. I'll get more $3. We, we definitely need to keep those in the shop, right? This is Birds of a Feather Sally Spencer Sampler. Now, I've had a few people tell me I'm drawn to samplers, I love samplers, but I'm scared to do anything too big. So I thought this would be perfect. 156 by 156 square. It only has six colors. It looks so much more vibrant than that because it's on that modeled fabric. It's on 32 count linen. You could do it on whatever you want. And it's just as cute as a button. I love this. Sally Spencer. And the message on it says, if you can see right underneath the alphabet, sooner begun, sooner done. Should that not be, that should be our motto in the stitching world. That's why we want, we like all the starts. Because the sooner we start, the sooner we can finish and sooner we can get on to something else, right? Love it. Sooner begun, sooner done. I'm into that one. I don't know if I've put one of those in my stash, but I need to. I showed you that. I don't think I showed you this. Okay, check this out. If you're a fan of Little House Needleworks, I found this online. I found this at the distributor, and it, it really kind of, it set me back a little bit. It stunned me a little bit. So we know that Classic Color Works is owned by Diane Williams, who is the same designer for Little House Needleworks, right? We know this. This is not a revelation. However, I have never seen Little Red Riding Hood, a storybook classic, 
counted cross-stitch design by Classic Color Works and Diane Williams. So this does not say that it's by Little House Needleworks. However, it's Diane Williams. So that tells me that this was her company before Little House Needleworks. Anybody know any, any fact checkers out there that can give me that info? It says... The grandmother lived out in the wood, half a league from the village, and just as Little Red Riding Hood entered the wood, a wolf met her. Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked creature he was and was not at all afraid of him. And then, CCW, which I can only deduct, stands for Classic Color Works, 01. So, would y'all agree with me that this may be Diane Williams' first chart? Question mark? Maybe? If you're a fan or a collector, get this. That's all I can tell you. I think that's pretty fascinating. So I sucked it right up. And did I buy one for myself? Of course I did. Because I don't have enough things. By special request of Bendy Stitchy, and already delivered to her personally, not personally, but I delivered it to her already, Kathy Barrick Blackheart. A lot of stitches in this. Uh, it's 94 by 100, but it's basically full coverage, right? So, if you like to stitch what Michelle does, and who doesn't? I know I do. She's recently acquired this into her collection, and I'm sure I can say that. Yeah. Back in stock. Spring ABCs. Back in stock, Willow Tree. This is five bucks, I think. We talked about this. What a deal. City Stitcher. This one is from 1994. And back in stock, Sweet Land of Liberty by Blackbird Designs. It's a book. If you're if you're a stitcher, if you're relatively new to stitching, let me just tell you a little something I've learned about Blackbird Designs. Get them while you can. Without notice, to my knowledge, with to me, to, to me there's no notice anyway, as far as I know. They go out of print. Do you know what happens when a chart goes out of print in the cross stitch world? People lose their minds. Lose their minds. I don't. I mean, I've done it. Have you heard of the Lizzie K retirement? People lose their mind, right? My light's flashing a little over there. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. It's an alt light. So, this is a 24 page booklet. It contains five patriotic cross stitch patterns, all of which are stunningly beautiful. Just gorgeous stuff. So, Blackbird Designs, get them while you can. There's a few more of these in stock now. I think I have like maybe five or six. Um, they're not they're not really that cheap, but they shouldn't be because the quality. I mean, this is a book. This is a, something you can put on your shelf and keep forever. And I hope that's what people are doing. I hope you're not buying it to save it up and flip it on the internet because that just gets on my nerves. But um, speaking of Blackbird Designs, I've had tons of interest and in purchases. Probably my number one seller in the shop, believe it or not. Let's see, top sellers in the shop currently, of course anything by Kathy Barrick, that goes without saying because we all love her. Um, Jeanette Douglas Letters from Mom is a very popular seller. The Blackbird Designs Magical Mystery Tour Beetle Series. Hugely popular. I've reordered it four or five times in the past month. If there's something you want from that, let me know. Email me. I'll add it to the next order and get it in for you. Um, Strawberry Fields is in a, there's a ton of sales for Strawberry Fields right now, so that's one's really popular. But the other ones are amazing. Like, I mean, they're all great. Um, if you have inquired about Blackbird Designs Home for the Holidays, booklet that the Cardinal was in, no. Have you met me? Well, have you internet met me? If there's a Cardinal on something, it's coming to me. Don't you fret. Now, I will tell you that it's been out of stock at all distributors, including Wichelt, which is one that I don't use a whole lot. It's out of stock everywhere. My light is flickering. I'm so sorry. But I personally called the distributor yesterday, and they said, we are on the list to get more. 
the ladies at Blackboard Designs told us more are coming. So it's not going out of print. Not at, at least not this week, as far as we know. Um, they will not notify me when it comes back in stock, but I will continue to try to order it when I place my order, which is just about every two or three days. Um, so I'm ordering plenty. Don't fear. If you want it, email me. I'll put, or I may do a thread on Facebook, which I've been doing a lot lately to help me with things. I'll write you in my handy dandy customer book. And before I list them online, I will PayPal you for one. If you asked for one, you're going to receive a PayPal invoice for it when they get here. So if you buy one from somewhere else between now and then, I know how it is. It's hard not to get one and it's hard to trust me to say, I'm, I've got you covered. Um, so just let me know to take you off the list. Because if not, when they get here, you're getting a PayPal invoice. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in part one of this video. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was two parts, but I was interrupted in the middle. Um, someone asked me about layaway. And I'm sorry, and I will email you directly to the individual who asked me. I won't be doing layaway. There are a lot of fees involved with every time you make a PayPal payment. Besides the fact that... I have to store everything until you decide to purchase it. And that doesn't seem like a big deal if, you know, you're thinking just for you, right? You have four or five charts with me. How big of a deal is that to store? But y'all see how much stuff I'm getting in these days. And guess what? It's coming right into my home. Not into a warehouse. Not into a real, L, you know, brick and mortar LNS. It's coming into my home. So I don't have a ton of room for it. So I won't be doing layaway. There are some online shops out there that do. Um, and I think it's awesome. But for me, it's just one more level. I don't want to extend myself more into something that I know that I'm not going to be great at managing and monitoring and providing that service for. So at this time, no layaway. I'm really sorry about that. But if there's something you want, pick it up if you can afford it. If you can't, that's okay. If it goes out of stock, just message me and I'll get it back in for you when you can, provided that it's available. So that, unfortunately, that's that's just the way I've got, that's, that's the policy I have to stick to with that. But Blackboard Designs, get them while you can. Get, get them all. They're all amazing. There's not a single Blackbird Design booklet that I've bought that I have thought I had an ounce of remorse about because I know that those charts... You know, the day's coming when these designers will stop putting out charts. Now, the exciting news is that there's new designers right behind them, up and coming every day, that will move forward and and continue to carry that torch. But the ones that we know and love, they're not going to be around forever. So I hope to keep sucking up all of the goodness that I can while they're here. I want to talk to you about books real quick. I haven't talked about books much lately because the only thing I have been reading organizational change. Not a good read. I can't recommend that along with all the other uh, school books. But let me show you this one. My light's sitting on it. So I've told y'all before that my favorite genre of books is Southern and Southern Gothic any kind of Southern Revival, Southern Gothic. One of my very favorite authors is a man by the name of Greg Isles. So this is book th two. And he has several trilogies and um, series out. This is not a small book. This is, this is book two and it is 850 pages. This one's called The Bone Tree. Um... This is number two in the Natchez Burning Trilogy. But his very first book, and you would want to start with the first one if you're interested in trying this. The first one, which I do not have on, um, I don't have it. I, I, what I do is I get the books. Most of the time at a used bookstore or at a thrift store, I read them and then I turn them in for credit at the used bookstore. Or I gift them away, either way. Um, so I don't have the first one in either of the trip either of his um series is right now but i'm moving this around so much i'm sorry it's probably making you crazy the first book is called the quiet game and i may have let me look real quick on my audible because i listen to them all when a book is this good as these are i read them at home and i listen to them on the go so um 
I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not sorry. Why am I saying that? That's a bad habit. There's book two. Okay. Here's book one. I don't want it to read it to you all, but I want to show you the cover so that if you're browsing, you can you can see it. Okay, it's doing whatever it does. It's probably going to randomly start reading it out loud to us. But So this is, um, the main character in his books is a man by the name of Penn Cage. Penn Cage's father um, was a governor. And this is all set in the Mississippi Delta in Natchez, Mississippi. So this is what the book looks like. That's The Quiet Game. It's the first one. I'm sorry about all this light. Okay. It's going to start playing and I don't want it to. Download in progress when you can't see it. Okay. So, Pen Cage is... I don't even know how to describe him as a character. He's amazing. That's all I can tell you. These books are... How do I say this? I, I, I don't know how to say this really, so I'm just going to say it. If you're offended by um, the shameful past of the South, which still happens a lot today. I mean, we don't have a wonderful um, history here in a lot of regards, especially with race relations and um, violence. So if those things are offensive to you, you do not want to read Greg Isles. Now, I shouldn't say offensive to you because I'm offended by that. I I'm offended by racially motivated crimes. I'm offended by uh, people's civil liberties being uh, infringed upon. I'm offended by all that. However, I'm not disturbed by reading a story that's rooted in fact in a factual, a, a fiction book that's rooted in factual occurrences. I am not um, in any way, you know, disturbed by that because it's our past and, and we can learn a lot from that. So, these books are all set in Natchez, Mississippi. Greg Isles lives in Natchez, Mississippi. So I've talked before about how important it is for me, to me, for someone to have an authentic voice and to know what the heck they're talking about in the area that they're talking about it. He does. Um, there's everything. There's a little bit of romance, not a whole lot. Really good, really, really good intrigue. Really, really good detective type novel. Um... Pen Cage is a very interesting character. Um, he was raised in this area. I'm sure that this character really is a similar personality to the author himself just because he writes from such, such an authentic place. But if you like um, if you like Southern Gothic books, if you like Southern Revival literature, if you like to feel like you're taking a vacation to the Mississippi Delta, you're not disturbed by crime-related books or... Um, intense plot lines. Um, these books are fantastic. There's another author named Greg, um, not Greg, John Hart, who I'll talk about in the following book. But this is just one that I had sitting here on the shelf in the kitchen. This is book two in the Natchez Burnings trilogy. Um, Natchez Burning, The Bone Tree, and Mississippi Blood are in this one. The first one that I discussed, The Quiet Game. Um, if you're going to read Pen Cage novels, by Greg Isles, start with The Quiet Game. That's all I'm going to say. Love you all. Thank you so much for your kind words, your support, your love. Big sunshine hugs to all of you guys, especially the ones who are freezing still up north. I'm freezing down here in the 50s, so I can relate. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will be MIA just a little bit until Monday. It's finals and projects, and I'm behind because the store has blown up and taken such an amazing turn. So I love you. If you don't hear from me until Monday, that's why. Okay. If you make a purchase, I'll still do my best to ship. You know, I always ship on Saturdays. That's not a problem, but I will be not as quick on the response as I have been because I need to get going on this schoolwork. Okay. I love y'all. Have a good day.